Man, what a start of a year. Lots going on. Even a couple of months ago, there were some things going on that I had missed covering because I was busy with different things and mostly procrastinating making videos. It's not like my channel gets the attention it deserves compared to other channels with their nothing burger information, you know, or game tests without showing settings. All right, I'm going off on a rant at the start of the video. That's no good. If you want to see me rant less, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to see me rant more, don't subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in this video, I will be going over some not so latest news, but news nonetheless that some of you might have missed. They're interesting to know and might help you further in your emulation career. But first, Let's talk about our guy, Coffin Colors, and the future of Winlater Seamod. Coffin Colors has been absent in emulation for quite a long time now and hasn't responded to my DMs for half a month. In fact, just today, while writing this script of this video, he replied to me with the following. Hello, lol. I've been recovering from life, but also I reverse engineered the Joy-Con 2 to the point that I now can enable mouse mode on PCs. Well, alright then. Well, listen. Uh, Coffin Colors probably has a lot on his plate right now. He's been dealing with family and other stuff. So, the future of Winlater Seamoth through Coffin Colors is pretty much unknown. However, some good developers have picked it up to further improve upon Coffin Colors' creation. And I say creation loosely. Because ultimately, Winlater is Bruno's baby. Steven MX now takes the lead, implementing quality of life and bug fixes to Winlater Simod, which is now forked to Winlater Ludashi, subsequently offering a benchmark version, a red magic and a vanilla version of the win of the emulator. If you're chasing maximum performance from your device, the Ludashi build, often called Winlater Ludashi or Ludashi Bionic, is the go-to option. This version is essentially the same as the standard Winlater Bionic fork, but with its package name changed to mimic the popular Ludashi benchmark app. On certain devices, especially Xiaomi, some Red Magic phones, and others with aggressive manufacturer optimizations, this tricks the system into enabling full performance mode, disabling thermal throttling, maxing out CPU and GPU clocks, and sometimes unlocking higher power limits, which is extremely bad for your battery. So please, for long gaming sessions, use an external cooler. Even if you own a Red Magic 11 Pro with those gimmicky cooling features, I know because I own one. Use this responsibly. Here's a cooler I recommend. Don't buy anything at less than 30 watts. Period. Anyways, the Red Magic build exposes the frame generation module, allowing you to use it. And obviously, Vanilla is the unmodified build, which I would recommend using. If you want to know how to turn any app into a benchmark app or exposing some proprietary feature, watch this short. Link in the description below. Steven MX is not the only one working on Winlater Ludashi, however. Believe it or not, our trolley rage baiting supreme leader of drivers and rappers, Piss Blaster, is still actively working on making mostly Mali. A good experience and sometimes adreno a bad experience but who knows with this guy not long ago vipc or vipsi depending how you pronounce it jumped into the ludashi contribution leaderboard and started improving coffin colors controller implementation it was a promising start many unity games that previously needed this fix suddenly began working properly that said there are still some lingering issues that need ironing out. Several users are reporting swap buttons, inconsistent behavior, or controllers failing entirely in certain situations. Hopefully this will be resolved in the future. Controllers are a high priority and should be on any emulator. It adds to the convenience of many users. Ludashi 2.8 marks the first build with 5th size 50's new controller implementation. Quality of life improvements, a file manager that allows you to create a game shortcut without needing to enter a container, which is absolute peak. I'll show you in a bit. 
added a driver download manager you can download drivers directly from the app and you can also edit the default repositories to your preference they added support for custom icons just click on the game icon and then you can change it be aware that you need to do a complete reinstall for these changes to work though you can access the file manager here it's pretty simple drop down arrow for options you can even move content and games from any location to any of your containers c drive do note the back gestures exits the file manager so to go back a page you need to use this arrow on the top left now if you navigate to a games executable and hit the drop down arrow you get several options here you can run games directly and choose which container to run with you can create a shortcut and choose which container the shortcut is made from which is absolutely my favorite quality of life feature now <laughs> and basic operations like copy cut rename delete and that's pretty much it for the file manager now let me show you how to download drivers from the adrenotools gpu driver screen on the top right tap the arrow button you will see a bunch of github repositories you can manually add repositories by tapping add source now to download drivers, tap one of the sources and it will show the available drivers. To me nothing comes up, not sure if it's bugged or a work in progress, but that's generally how it should work. Another cool feature is the ability to change the game shortcuts thumbnail icon. Just tap on the icon and the file manager opens. That's it for Winlater Ludashi. Let's now talk about the two behemoths of emulation. First up, Box64. A week ago, TSEP released Box64 version 0.4.0 with the long-awaited Box32 to play your old games. There's a lot to go through here, but the highlight for us is this. While Box32, used to run Steam, is still experimental and unstable, stability did improve. Still expect some crashes when downloading things with Steam, and it's not all. Battle.net is also getting stable, and some games are working too, not all unfortunately, and your success might depend on your geographical region as program versions might differ. Oh, that's a new one. Capture Card. He has finally invested in a capture card, the Elgato HD60X. <laughs> he took my suggestion to heart, enjoy it Petit Sep. it's a great capture card. Now, I'm not sure what else is beneficial to us, as I'm not an expert on CPU architectures and whatnot. But I think the E-Sync, F-Sync and NT-Sync has got to be one of, one of them, as I've seen many conversations about this involving x86 emulation. But yeah, there's uh, lots going on here, so give it a good read. Now, FIX had a lot of things up their sleeve, especially with their reveal of working directly with Valve for the Steam frame. I think the last tag fix version I missed talking about was 2511. More GIT improvements, potential memory savings, fixes crashes due to out of bounds branch encoding, enable AVX for 32 bit by default, and the highlight of this release performance. This one is especially interesting for us because with this, they have improved the TSO memory model. This mostly affected mono bleeding edge and game assembly unity games my favorites primarily we have fixed an oversight with string instructions still using tso memory model by default which was significant performance issues in games like dishonored we also optimized x87 register exchange instructions slightly from my tests i have found that more unity games started to work with the fastest tso mode preset back when when we still had it while prior to this fix they needed the fast option now we have presets named the same as box 64 so in this case it would be the performance preset and finally minor bug fixes for fix 2512 another round of significant changes nothing that jumps out to me as being relevant to us but because again i'm not a cpu architecture expert <laughs> but I'm sure we do benefit from some of these. Now for the latest tag, they made a considerable jump from 2511 to 2601. There are a couple of highlights that calls my attention under GIT fixes. This month, there weren't actually that many GIT fixes. We found a bug that was breaking Ubisoft's Uplay program, which is now fixed. 
Additionally, we resolved some handling of self-modifying code on our Wine implementation that could fix some spurious hangs or incorrect invalidations. Sounds like it's time to test UV Play again. Anyways, minor Linux syscall fix. This month, we noticed that Steam was using some new FCNTL syscall operations that we didn't handle. This caused Steam to crash in some rare edge cases when it actually called this syscall. We have now resolved this and future proofed any new commands getting emulated by passing directly to the kernel. Steam fixes and improvements are always welcome. But Steam on x86 emulation with FEX remains unstable, unfortunately. From all our tests, it just results in hanging or infinite loading. Not sure if it's a user error or something we're missing. But many users have been experiencing the same. Box64 has the upper hand here. However, only with Box0.7.3, which contains a so-called online patch, while the later versions do not possess this patch. And finally, more code caching implementation work. Sounds like a good thing, thing. <laughs> and that's about it. The gap between box and fex in performance is increasingly closing, with most scenarios performing in parity. Right now, it's almost just about convenience in setting up the presets with their environment variables and compatibility. Of course, mileage may vary between devices. Heads up to Petisep and the team of fex for their incredible dedication. DXVK and VKD3D developers have also made considerable progress and released new versions over time. But again, nothing that stands out for the layman just like me. <laughs> that doesn't mean there is nothing new though. The testing continues. I think that's all there is to talk about. I think there was nothing else noteworthy to discuss. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Initial turnip support for Adreno 8 series. Ladies and gentlemen, Elite and Gen 5 users, the time has come for us to rule the emulation space. No longer are we bound by the constraints that Qualcomm has to offer. Well, technically, this new turnip is thanks to Qualcomm. <laughs> because as of a week ago, at the time of this video, turnip Gen 8 is alive. Do know that this is all a work in progress. Everything you see shared online is using a very hacky version of turnip. It's not official in any way, it is also not stable, no matter how some may like to paint it. Development is progressing rapidly, and they are targeting a release before January 14th. It could arrive later depending on any final tweaks or unexpected delays. Some time ago, a developer from a Russian emulation community introduced hacky patches to Rob Clark's Gen 8 turnip source to expose OpenGL and enable detection of the Adreno 830 and 840 GPUs to WinLaters and GameHub's wrappers. This allowed users to boot OpenGL games using turnip. The results were surprising, some working flawlessly, some with minor issues. The day after, more hacks had been introduced, this time to make DirectX 12 games boot. It was a glorious day, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in joy. And it does not stop here. Today, more things have been discovered, and now we have hacks to make both DXVK and VKD 3D render, in some cases even flawlessly. While performance parity with proprietary drivers varies by case, the most significant improvement lies in stability. A substantial reduction in micro stuttering and system hangs has been achieved, as shown in this comparison between proprietary DXVK and Turnip VKD 3D on Dragon Ball Spark in Zero. Turnip running DirectX 12 now delivers smoother frame delivery and faster load times than their proprietary drivers running DirectX 11. That is incredible. <laughs> what more, compatibility has increased. Games that Adreno 840 previously couldn't run can now run. Like Red Dead Redemption 2 here and at a shockingly decent performance. Remember guys, this is all completely work in progress. Who knows how it'll turn up when it officially releases, or heck, in a couple of months. 
Remember how long it took for the Adreno 750 turnip to become in parody with its Qualcomm equivalent? Man, this is exciting. Now, I know everyone is excited and they want to try this. I've seen people rushing out to get what's available, but I'm afraid it's better to just wait for the official release. Let developers cook. That is why I'm not releasing any to the public anymore than I've already released. Which, by the way, isn't even mine to begin with. I didn't compile the one that's that's on my repo. Credits for it goes to with, uh, this guy. This uh, decision comes after some backlash from the lead developer not being amused of it being released to the public. So to keep myself from any further liable consequences, I will avoid uploading more to the wider public. Especially because I fumbled the first release that was broken, people didn't read the warnings and I've gotten the severe issues with their device. And I'll say it again, please read the change logs before using any of my drivers. These new turnips aren't supposed to be used for switch emulators or on Adreno 830 and 840. At least not yet. It won't work, so don't try. <laughs> I hope you understand. Well, that's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Happy New Year and see you next time.